The World Health Organization is declaring a, what it sees to be potentially the end of the pandemic. They're saying it's near. Still, the world is reminded that this is not the time to be complacent. JC Cosico with the details. We're not there yet, but the end is in sight. We can see the finish line. The end is in sight. That was the statement of World Health Organization Director General Tedros Ghebreyesus on the state of the COVID-19 pandemic worldwide. As last week, the number of weekly deaths reached its lowest point since March 2020. WHO data shows 11,000 COVID deaths were recorded globally from September 5 to 11, 22% lower than the previous week. Weekly infections also fell by 28% during the same period. Still, the WHO warns the fight continues. Now is the worst time to stop running. Now is the time to run harder and make sure we cross the line and reap the rewards of all our hard work. In the Philippines, COVID infections also continue to decline. That as of September 14, average daily cases are at 2,200, down 7% from the previous week. Positivity rate, meanwhile, is at 12.5%. Earlier this week, the government has allowed the optional use of face masks in open and uncrowded outdoor areas. Local governments are now issuing their respective ordinances following the new policy. But in Manila, face masks are still required in heavily crowded spaces and during activities where social distancing cannot be obtained, just like the Feast of the Black Nazarene. Halimbawa po, eh, sa mga lugar kagaya ng Quiapo, Divisoria, ini-encourage po namin na sana kayo po ay patuloy na gumamit ng face mask para na rin po sa inyong proteksyon. The DOH also reminds the public to assess when to wear or remove their face masks. Si dapat turuan natin yung ating mga mamamayan na syempre pag pupunta tayo sa high risk area susot natin ang mask. Pag pumunta tayo outdoor low risk tatanggalin. But the DOH maintained it won't recommend easing face mask restrictions in schools as masking remains protective to children. Hindi ho namin irerekomenda kahit kailan na magtanggal ng mask ang ating mga kabataan kapag sila ay papasok sa eskwelahan. Gusto ko rin lang hong puntuhin na wala hong harm na nagagawa ang mask sa ating kabataan. The agency says it will soon issue its revised minimum health protocol guidelines following the national order easing outdoor face mask rules. At dyan natin ilalagay kung ano yung mga specifics natin according to low-risk individuals, according to low-risk settings. For News 5, J.C. Cosigo, We Are One News. To share his take on the WHO's latest pronouncements, we have, we have with us on the show Okta Research's uh, father, Nick Ostriaco, is joining us live via Zoom. Welcome to The Big Story, Father. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me this evening. So, uh, Father, this is the most optimistic we've, we've heard. I mean, frankly, the most daring we've heard the WHO. At the same time, they're stressing that we, we, we still need to be very cautious. What do you take out of this statement? Well, I think it's, it's, it's an accurate assessment of where we are as the world. Keep in mind that the pandemic is not evenly distributed across the world. So certain countries are, uh, in a sense, more endemic than other countries mm. right now. So, but, but what the WHO is saying is that looking across the world, there is much hope that we are approaching the end. Father, you've been looking at the variants for uh, the whole of the pandemic. Um, can you tell us a little bit uh, about the movement of, of the, the COVID virus? How is it evolving now? Has it stopped um, evolving into other sub-variants? And why this optimism um, from the WHO? Well, I think the optimism is really uh, the Omicron variant. So the Omicron variant is a game changer. It changed in January. And the virus, continue, the virus continues to mutate, uh, but the mutations appear to be just different. They're highly transmissible, but less uh, 
toxic, less, less deadly than the prede predecessor variant. So we have BA.5, and there was a concern about BA.2.75, but now that, that there is data that shows that it's just, it's just BA.5 and BA.2.75, they're comparable. So what we're seeing now throughout the world is we have a variant of Omicron that appears to be very transmissible, but relatively mild, especially for those who are vaccinated and uh, boosted. So I, I, once again, I encourage all our Kababayans to be vaccinated and to be boosted to have maximum protection against the Omicron COVID-19 variant. Mm. Father, notwithstanding what Dr. Jebreyes has said, the WHO is saying that, you know, we see the light at the end of the tunnel, but they also said now is not the time to go slow. In fact, he said this is the time to run even faster. What does that mean for us? What does running even faster and working even harder mean? So at this point, really, the singular defense against COVID-19 is our immunity wall. So it's really, really important for us to enhance our immunity wall, which is why I'm encouraging our Kababayans to be boosted. And this is particularly challenging now because the, the story on the street is that you don't need to be boosted. It's relatively mild. And many of my friends, my family members, uh, they're not choosing to be boosted anymore because they have decided that the, the cost of getting a booster is worse than the benefit. And so they're deciding, if I get COVID, I get COVID. It's only going to be mild. But Father, isn't it contrary to uh, what we're doing now, uh, maskless in public spaces and running harder? Isn't that going in opposite directions? Um, or are we just well, focusing on booster shots? So we have to focus on booster shots, but we also have to realize that as the variant becomes more and more transmissible, uh, minimum public health standards become less effective. This is very clear throughout the world. That's why I think the government was willing to relax the outside um, masking requirement. There are still people who wear masks. And I think especially those who are senior citizens, those who are vulnerable, they should continue to wear masks. But I think it's also important that if, as we continue to the old normal, I think it's uh, that we begin to transition, recognizing that we are moving to endemic stage. Uh, we cannot wear masks forever. And so we have to begin to prepare our people for the time when we will remove masks, uh, as many, many, many countries in the world have already completely done. Father, one last question. Is there anything, I mean, to, still to, to uh, Gretchen's uh, uh, question, is there some, anything that we're doing right now that is incongruous with the, the, what the WHO is encouraging us to do? Well, I, again, I think we just have to push the vaccine booster program. I'm concerned that uh, it's not a complacency. I think our our, our Kababayans have moved on from vaccinations. They're just mm -hmm. done with vaccinations. Uh, and then the question now is, what next? What is plan B? What is plan B if our people decide they do not want to be boosted? And this is my concern, because my concern, of course, is that we cannot wait forever with masks, because there are costs for masks. I think people don't realize that there are benefits for masks, and we are, we are reaping those benefits but there are costs as well. And we have to be able to do a cost-benefit analysis every single month as we move forward, not thinking that we are going to be wearing masks forever. A super last question to add to that. Uh, do you think that um, um, boosters are, you know, it's, are something that we need to take every how many months? And uh, because the WHO was talking about the number of deaths, but they didn't mention the waves of infection. So uh, in building that immunity wall, what would we need to do uh, approaching well, the endemic? So what, as we're approaching endemic, what we're seeing now is that those who were infected with, uh, uh, with COVID have a natural infection. Their protection lasts 14 plus months and ongoing. So the thought is that if you got a natural infection, uh, infection that that will, in, in a sense, provide an extra boost to your booster and your vaccine, vaccine protection. So the thought, I think, is that we will not need to have boosters 
every year unless you have you are a senior citizen unless you are immunocompromised, unless you have comorbidities, it will be something like uh, the flu. And then what will happen there is uh, we have citizens who get flu shots every year, but most of us do not. Most of us will get the flu. And in the same way, many of us will get COVID over and over and over again for the rest of our lives. Okay, Father Nick Ostriaco of Okta Research.